What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about camshaft selection and what cam to pick for your particular application, how to select the cam, what company to go with, and um, you know, to not get too big a cam, not too little a cam, what do you expect out of performance wise? I've been getting a lot of questions like that. So I'm gonna break down my knowledge of camshafts, how I choose camshafts when I pick an, when I pick one for an engine, and uh, what how to read a cam card, and what to expect with certain uh, things that you can do with the cam as far as degreeing it in, things of that nature. So anyway, before I get into it, like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and let's jump into it. So camshafts, guys. So I've got two different engines here. This is a 496 cubic inch big block Chevrolet with aluminum heads and aluminum intake. This is a 5.3 liter or 325 cubic inch LS engine. Both of these uh, engines have very similar cam profiles. And, and this is a perfect example of what I'm gonna talk about. Here you have a 325 cubic inch small block Chevrolet and a 496 cubic inch big block Chevrolet. The similar cam profiles are going to mean that these cams operate differently in these engines. So, for example, this engine here has uh, a camshaft that's around 600 lift. It has three, 236 de degrees of duration at 50,000 and 246 de degrees of duration on the exhaust side at 50,000. This camshaft has 231 degrees of duration at 50,000 on the intake side and 239, I believe, of exhaust duration at 50,000 on the exhaust side. So theoretically, the cams are very similar in size, um, and but they're gonna operate in these two engines in two total, two totally different ways, and I can tell you why. It's by the lobe separation angle, which the lobe separation angle on your cam card lets you know where the torque is gonna land in your power band. So. If you have a camshaft, like this camshaft is cut on a 110 lobe separation angle, the camshaft for this engine is cut at a 116. So the reason why that is, this is a street engine naturally aspirated. So a street engine that's naturally aspirated who has a lobe separation angle of 110 degrees and an intake center line of 106 degrees means that this engine will make really good low to mid-range power. It'll probably run out of breath somewhere around 6,000, 6,500 RPM, 6,300 RPM. Um, even with the good cylinder heads and all that good stuff, it's still gonna make really nice low end, mid-range power, perfect for the street, perfect for pushing around a 3,800 pound Chevelle. This engine, on the other hand, is gonna have a lobe separation of 116, I believe, or 114, maybe 114. Yeah, maybe it is 114. I'll put the cam card, I'll show you a picture of the cam card to verify, but I believe it, yeah, I believe it is 114, but either way. So it having a wider lobe separation angle means that the torque on this engine is gonna come higher in the RPM band. So when you have torque coming in a higher RPM band on a boosted application, the reason why you wanna do that is because Number one, the tighter the lobe separation angle, the more overlap you have, that would give you more of like a, a blow-by effect inside your cylinder. But also what that's gonna do is, is that's gonna allow the engine to not, to make the power higher in the RPM band. That way you're not overstressing your, your engine on the lower end. Cause a, 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 a turbo application will produces, produces tons of torque at the, at under the curve. And what I mean by under the curve is, if you look at a dynograph, a dynograph has an, an arc in it, you know, and the torque and, and the horsepower eventually cross, but there's an arc in there. So that arc, when I mean under the curve, when you've got a torque band that goes like this and it drips down, all that power under the curve, a turbo application usually makes a lot of that kind of power, like a lot of straight up power, you know, across the whole RPM band, and it has a lot under the curve. So, that's opposite from a naturally aspirated engine. So when you read a cam card and you have a lobe separation angle of say 116, then you know that that torque's gonna be flat and it's gonna be high in the RPM band, higher in the RPM band. And then when you have a tighter lobe separation angle, 
your your torque is going to be a little bit more peaky it's going to be like more peaky not so flat across and it's going to produce it at a lower rpm band which is great for a naturally aspirated street engine who needs to scavenge the cylinders with a overlap now that overlap is what you get when you hear that you know thunk at the thunk at the thunk at the thunk of that sound that's that overlap really working good. Now this engine will have some overlap. It will have a, a good little lope to it just because of the size of the engine and what the cam profile is, but it will actually work very well in a turbo application. So that's two different applications where at duration, as far as the camshaft goes on the cam card is very similar and the lift is very similar, but the lobe separation angle and the intake center line are two totally different things. And, and, and that makes both these engines work in two totally different ways. So you can actually look at a cam card at 50 thousandths and kind of see about what kind of power, where your power is gonna land in your power band. Now that has a lot to do with like your intake manifold, how tall it is and the head flow. That all, that all contributes to where your torque's gonna, I mean, where your horsepower and torque's gonna fall at. But just for the sake of talking about cam profiles now, um, the rule of thumb usually is the tighter the lobe separation angle, the tighter the intake lobe center line, the lower down and more peaky the torque's gonna be, and the wider lobe separation angle, and the, um, the, the wider the lobe separation angle, the wider the intake lobe center line is gonna be, the torque's gonna be up higher and a little flatter. Um, that's why a lot of nitrous applications wants that wide lobe separation angle. That way you don't have a bunch of valve overlap, number one, so you can get the you can get the cylinder in, get the cylinder out. You can get the nitrous in and out of there really fast. Kind of same thing with boost. You know, you get the boost in, you get the boost out. You get the boost in more air, more fuel. You get the boost out. That's what you want in a naturally aspirated. You want that scavenging effect. You want the intake valve to open, and then the exhaust valve to open a little bit sooner than before the intake valve closes, giving you that overlap, so you can have a scavenging effect inside the cylinder that produces a greater vacuum inside a naturally aspirated cylinder inside bringing in more air and bringing in more fuel. So, and also, you know, a lot of guys seem to think that, well, I've got a camshaft here that has a high lift value. The lift value doesn't really affect how the engine is going to idle or anything like that. When you want, if you want a camshaft that's going to idle and, and you don't really care um, what performance it, it produces, then as long as you've got a tight load separation angle, and you've got a moderate duration, it doesn't really matter. And I can give you a perfect example. I had a stock 400 Chevrolet, okay? It had a uh, 28480 Comp Magnum cam in it, which I believe is 230, 230 at 50 thousandths and 480 lift across the whole, it was a, it was a uh, standard pattern camshaft. It didn't have a split pattern on it. So when I changed that, that cam in a stock 400, you could barely notice the idling because it was on a 110. And on a 110, on a 110 intake lobe center line, that cam had a little like do 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 It had just a tiny, tiny little lope that you could barely, barely hear. Well, the, a friend of mine was like, "Hey man, I really want this this engine to lope. I could care less what it does. I don't care how fast it is, how much power it makes. It's a stock 400, stock head, stock rod, stock piston, stock crankshaft." All I want to do is to sound badass. I said, okay, no problem. <laughs> I went online, I bought a, a uh, Lenati bootlegger camshaft that was cut on a 108, had a 104 degrees intake lobe center line and 108 degrees of um, uh, lobe separation angle. And I think it was like a 236 uh, degree, degrees, degrees of duration at 50 thousandths with like 485 lift. And that thing was loping. I'm talking about lugga da dugga lugga da lugga da truck 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 truck. I mean, just loped real good. And the reason why is because it had just the right amount of duration, just the right amount at 50 thousandths, and it had that real tight lobe separation angle, which made that overlap really pronounced. So that is with camshafts, guys. And so if you got a camshaft that has a, say, a power, I can uh, you can look at a cam card like anything between, let's say, 200. And let's say 230 degree, 230 thousandths and 240 thousandths, you know, your your power band is gonna fall, you know, somewhere around the 6,500 RPM range, um, depending on your application. I mean, you know, uh, a boosted application, you might get a few more RPM out of it um, and things like that. But for general, for general knowledge of, of engines, um, that's gonna be 
be the guesstimate. Um, you know, my nitrous camshaft that I had, I had ground for bullet for my old Charlie Murphy car, it had 290 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths. And so that cam made peak power, made peak power at about 6,800 RPM. It would rev on up to about 7,800 in a uh, 434 cubic inch engine. So, you know, it also had a wide loop separation angle for nitrous and it had the, um, we had the um, 15 degrees of duration, I believe it was ground more on the exhaust side and had the exhaust valve coming in earlier to scavenge that, um, coming in earlier, staying open later to scavenge that nitrous effect. Made a whole lot of power on the nitrous and, but it did actually hurt naturally aspirated motor power. So it's all about your application. Um, for you street guys, man, you know, um, I, I've, in my older age, I'm starting to get more of like this street mentality where I want to be able to crank this thing up, sit in traffic, get idle and lope and sound really good, but never run hot, runs real strong, got good bottom end, good mid range torque, cause that thing is going to be fun to drive. This turbo LS application is going to be a different ball game. It's going to be, you know, E85. It's going to rev to seven grand, 7,200. It's going to have 20 pounds of boost and it's going to be a purpose built street race car, street race truck. And it is going to have the ability to be able to make big horsepower out of a small cubic inch. But the cam profile is what's going to give it that, that edge as far as utilizing the boost for the application at hand. Um, so, like I said, guys, at the end of the day, the basic science of camshafts, picking a camshaft is, you know, you read your the duration at 50 thousandths um, and you consult uh, your cam grinder and you say, hey, you know, I was looking at this cam grind, but I'd rather, I like, I would rather have this, you know, or that. Or if you know absolutely nothing about camshafts, usually somebody from like Lenati or Bullet, those are my two go-to companies. Those guys are very knowledgeable on camshaft grinds. They will put you in the right direction of what you're asking for. Now, if you're going with a cam grinder and they don't ask you a bunch of questions, then they're not going to cut you the right camshaft. They, they're going to want to know what your head flow is. What rocker are you using? What compression ratio are you? What's your cubic inch? How hard are you going to turn it? Blah, 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 blah. Are you going to use a power outer? What, what power outer are you going to use? How much boost are you going to apply to it? How much nitrous are you going to spray to it? Um, do you plan on driving it? Do you plan on it? Do you need a good idle? I mean, all this stuff, does it need to pull? Does the engine have to make vacuum, more vacuum for all your accessories? All this stuff they're gonna ask you, and a good cam grinder will ask you all that stuff. So at the end of the day, guys, when you're selecting a camshaft, look at your degrees at 50 thousandths. That's gonna give you about, you know, where you're gonna, you can kind of guesstimate where your engine RPM band is gonna make the most power. And uh, your lift value, is, you just remember your lift value. You don't have to have an outrageous lift to have good performance. Um, but your lift value doesn't affect more over how much the engine performs as far as the RPMs, it is how much it allow, how much air and fuel it allows in the cylinder. So just remember guys, at the end of the day, it's always best to consult a cam grinder and, and, and let them pick you a cam per application. And, and nowadays they'll cut you a, a custom cam right, on, right off the shelf. I mean, they'll pull, they'll pull you a core off the shelf and cut you a custom cam that'll work great for your application. You just need to communicate with them. You need to have your facts together on your engine build. And usually they'll get you in the right direction, guys. So anyway, like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, guys, hit me up in the comments. Um, I know I try to cover a lot and camshaft grinds are very broad. That's a very broad, um, it's a very it's a it's a very broad topic you can't just nail it down so lobe separation angle you know intake lobe center line duration at 50 thousandths lift values and opening and closing events on the cam card you can go on google and you can see uh a picture of the camshaft what all that stuff necessarily means and, and, and all that stuff comes into play when you start to degree a camshaft in to a engine and when i do this ls engine i will do you a video on how to degree a camshaft in um, and use those values from the cam card. I will post a couple of cam cards in this video so you can kind of see what I'm talking about so you can kind of get a gist of what intake lobe center line is, what where it's at in the cam card, what that value means, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, like guys, like, comment, subscribe, uh, like, throw me a, a, a um, message in the comments if you're kind of confused or whatever or if you got uh, any general knowledge that you like to share. So anyway, guys, thank you. Have a good one.
You want to eat pizza with Dada? Hmm? It's too hot though. Oh yeah. A pancake and sausage. Would you rather have pancake and sausage than pizza? Or do you want Kool-Aid? Kool-Aid. You like milk or beer? Beer. <laughs>